Now, if there's a figure of general fascination in football, uh, certainly Johan Cruyff is very much one of them. And delighted to say we're joined by Auke Koch, who's a journalist in the Netherlands, who's written many sports books, including Always on the Attack. This was originally published in 2019, and it's been subsequently translated to English and is available as of this year. Always on the Attack, the biography of Johan Cruyff. Auke, great to have you on the show. Hello there. I suspect the answer is uh, plentiful. Why Johan Cruyff? Why write about Cruyff? Uh, yeah, that's a long story. But, um, well, the main thing is that, that of course, uh, uh, Cruyff in, in Holland especially is a, a kind of a myth. And, and especially when, when, when he died, you know, the, half, the, half the country was in grief and everything, like, like in uh, Catalonia, Spain, etc. And um, therefore it came um, somehow extra interesting for me to, you know, to write a book in which uh, the myth uh, will be replaced by the, by the, re the real person that Johan Cruyff was. So that's, and, and, and as a par paradox, to me, I think it made him really be even bigger than a myth and more interesting because who likes a myth? I mean, people are far more interesting than myths, I think. And was the myth previous to your book that Cruyff was a perfect, wonderful person in every way? Well, not maybe not really in every way, but in, in uh, many ways, yes, because, you know, it's kind of almost as a, as a religious figure. And, um, and and very and you know as, as as a person he was seen as a person of inspiration and 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 as a, as a let's say as a metaphor of attacking football etc cetera, etc cetera. and um, and the, and of course and that's of course is a is a wonderful thing but on the other hand it it oh, to to me it 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 was really interesting to find to find out how he got to this ideas etc and his and his thinking of football and 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 how and how he was in life because if also in holland somehow the story became um shorter and shorter so that's why i wrote a really thick book <laughs> incredibly detailed it must have taken a huge amount of work yes it was i think i spoke to more than 170 people about him in in England even and in and in any and in the US and Spain and Holland of course and and it was really big because not not everybody was will very willing to uh, talk again about Cruyff you know they they would say well I've uh, said already many many things about him in the past etc and of course there 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 were lots of books to to read and uh, documentaries to to watch his theater and, and and of course also to to uh, watch many matches as I could get get my hand on on uh, on the internet etc and uh, DVDs mm. because you know as a for a research it's always far more interesting when you talk about football to to see whole 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 matches and not only the the hi highlights yes because I think so I've only... many 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 hours. I can imagine. For instance, if we start with Cruyff the footballer for a moment, most of us listening and I, I, our listeners, have, we've all seen the highlights. I don't know if many of us of a certain age have watched many 90-minute matches with Cruyff playing. So what did you learn about Cruyff the footballer? Well, if you, if you uh, talk about um, uh, really looking at Cruyff when he played f football for, for whole, whole matches, and I'm, and I'm already a very old person so i've already i've uh, seen him play in in the in the stadiums of of amsterdam in in all for uh, several times and i i think somehow um when you look at the whole matches and you see what he's doing or what he or what he is not doing and the natural of things in his in his movements also in in, in making you know in in and in short short passes, etc. Then you really see how uh, how uh, great great he was. That, that that he would not only use you know what many footballers do, his, his the inside of his right foot, but he would also use the outside of his right foot. And he would also when when he got older and older, he uses his left foot more and more. And and 
believe me or not, um, I think it was in his uh, farewell match in 78 that, that I saw for the first time that he made a really a wonderful pass uh, across with the outside of his weaker left foot. I mean, if you consider that, you know, that is far more uh, difficult to play a ball really good with, with the outside and then with the outside of his weaker foot that that told me and he was 31 at, at the time that he was really ambitious and, and, and full of self uh, criticism in at every training and every match that he played. Interesting. So you saw him improve and hone his craft. Yes, yes. Because, you know, one of the first things that I uh, read about his le left foot, that was when his uh, parents, you know, they, they got uh, mad of the, of the young uh, Johan uh, more, more than once, because Johan was, was very, very uh, restless and, and, and a nervous guy, not, not very easy to uh, cope with. And then his his elders would say, you know, okay, Johan, stop uh, quarreling and 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 uh, chatting and playing with the ball. Go outside in, in into the garden and go and, and practice your left foot. And then he was about, let's say, seven, seven years of age, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so when when I watch Scruff play from when I when we have really really pictures moving pictures from him, let's say, when he was uh, 16, 17. And, and, and it, it was really, really fascinating for him, watching him as an, as an artist, how he, how he grew in his instruments, you know, to uh, play a ball and really see him develop his, his insights in, in the game and using, and as in his 13s, you know, when, when he was, I, there were matches when he was about 34 or 35 and uh, that, that, that he was injured at his right foot, so his, his best foot. And then he would go, say, okay, I'll, I'll play for Ajax then or Feyenoord. And then a, a, a whole match, he would only use his weaker left foot. It's just incredible. Wow, insane. Yeah. Something which always struck me about Cruyff when you watch him is that you use the word artist there. And of course he was such an artist and he would do very instinctive things I think on a pitch he would just react wonderfully to different scenarios and conjure up the necessary move or trick or pass so yeah. he had that very instinctive element and yet we also think of Cruyff as maybe the most cerebral of footballers who could talk theory for hours and would think about the game so much away from the pitch you know oftentimes the instinctive footballers don't spend time thinking about the game as much or vice versa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Croy seems to have been a potent cocktail of the two. <laughs> yes, you know, uh, many times when, when I give, give uh, lectures about Crive and my, and my uh, bi biography and stuff, people ask me, you know, where, where do you see how Crive when you talk of the, the, the Stefano and Messi and Beckenbauer, etc., Pele, where, where do you see him? And then, and then I say, well, if you combine uh, uh, a player and a coach and, and uh, now, well, let's say a philosopher about, about his sports, then the cry is number one. You see, uh, if, I, if I ask you, what's the theory, the, theory, the theory of Beckenbauer about football, your answer would be very short. Mm. You wouldn't know. Or, or Di Stefano or Messi, has Messi ever really said something inter interesting about his pro profession? I don't, I don't believe so, or uh, Ronaldo, et cetera. So Cruyff, all these, these three uh, stages, I think in these things, Cruyff is, is a, has been a unique uh, person and, and he already wanted to uh, love to talk uh, uh, a, a, a lot. He was really a nervous guy, as I as I told you. And mm. already when he was, let's say, eighteen, and a young guy in the squad of Ajax and Amsterdam, his uh, fellow mates would uh, call him uh, Fli Flipper, you know, from the old uh, American uh, te uh, television series about this dolphin who was making sounds all all the time and very cheerful, but also a little bit irritating at at times. That's how that's how had they. Uh, saw him because he was talking all the time. And some, some of his teammates would say, 
he can he he can talk as as good as he plays the ball. Something I want to ask you, Auka. So, Cruyff makes his debut for Ajax as a teenager. He is a pretty naturally talented, gifted footballer. How early on in his footballing career did it become apparent to his teammates that he had an incredible mind and that he had an ability to communicate his views on the game? Um, well, um, for his teammates and his, his coach in those days, it was Rinus Michels, maybe, maybe you've heard of him. And yeah. um, of course you have. And, and um, I think it was let's say the late 60s so then he was about 22 um he already was someone something of a leader of course there he, he was not a the captain yet but he he would uh you know change things in the in the pitch and and then some sometimes even his coach because would would get would get angry because because had told the players to to play so and so and when and when the match went on and crowd was looking hmm things don't go well here and he said to his fellow mates well if you go stand there and you go there and i'll be here and then things will go more smoothly and then the michels would say afterwards what the hell were you doing johan it, that was not my system johan said yeah but this was more logic and uh and and even at that young age and, and that's because that you know as as um, his ability his ability to to see things to see the spaces at the at the pitch that that was the one of which he said that was the only thing i i never had to do training or or whatever that was that was just in me mm. and 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 later on that was that would also be his first let's say his first uh uh, uh feature that that he would want to see in a in a young player yes is he seeing it and then what is it you know that's seeing what you have to do or you don't have to do and etc so you mentioned there uh, renus mickels and when people talk about the dutch team of the 70s and total football they mention renus mickels and johan Cruyff together the coach and the player working in tandem and developing this new frontier, this new system. That's an interesting insight that at times Cruyff would change things without the say-so of his coach. Mm -hmm. Who is the driving force of total football of the two? Or, 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 or did, it, did it become a, an equal partnership? Yeah, that's, that's often been a uh, subject of uh, debate in Holland. Uh, there were also you know, camps. Are you pro Cruyff or pro Michels? That's yeah. all... A bit silly uh, to me, you know. They, they they were like father and son, but not. It was not a simple uh, relationship. Uh, on the one hand, uh, Michels really had a hard a hard job in in getting Cruyff disciplined to make him more a uh, team player than uh, you know Cruyff in as a and in his uh, character was rather selfish when he was young he was only thinking about making goals and uh, dribbling etc uh, so really michels told him a lot about tactics and and what his tasks would be in in the in the field um, but at the same time um after some years michels had to give him the liberty to do as he pleased in the pits because michels wasn't stupid he he, he could see that Cruyff was brilliant um and that and and, and that cry really saw things very very good and when you say to, total football i think uh it was in in, uh, in the first place it was a, a, combina a combination of both mm. the first the first time michels uses the your the word uh total football and that's really interesting that's already at the end of uh end of 19 um 65 when Cruyff was had not yet had a had a had a had a uh, place in the in the team for 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 every week, uh, but but then he was more um, but then he was not yet thinking about to, uh, total football matters met those really fascinating dynamics as Ajax and the Dutch team would have at the beginning of the 70s. But in general, Cruyff of 
Michos was already thinking about, you know, full full backs go, going ahead, and and the attackers also really re thinking in and cooperating in the defense, etc. But it uh, beyond that, it was Cruyff who made it more uh, look natural, and uh, Cruyff was more than Michos always thinking about attacking football, more than Michos. Cruyff always saw the solution in an, in a forwardly way, if you if if you know what I mean. So, Michels would at times think, well, the next uh, opponent is really 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 hard to to beat. So let's play more defensive, uh, etc. And Cruyff would never do that. Cruyff, some you know, at the late sixties, Ajax would play in really harsh European games. Ajax would play five three two. Even while in the, in the myth in Holland, also they said I was always playing four three three etc. That's that's nonsense. Uh, but Cruyff, the they hated the, that sort of game because then he he would be the only player at front, only with, with his fellow mate Pete Pete Kaiser. So two only at front, and then he would not feel enough support from the midfielders, and he hated that because Cruyff at his at at his best, as as we saw him, let, let's say in uh, seventy four, he was Cruyff. Uh, making combinations, switching places with uh, mid midfielders. That's Cruyff at his best, and uh, and that and that's what he added to uh, Michel. So the really, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the English uh, phenomenon uh, Brian Brian Glenville would say that the uh, total football was being played by Ajax in the beginning of the 70s. So after Michel's, because after Michel's there came Stefan. Uh, Kovac from Hungary, and he was really a modest guy, and he gave Cruyff all the space that Cruyff wanted. Mm. And from then on, Ajax would also always attack and play 4-3-3, etc. So it was uh, in 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 the basics. It was Michos, but Cruyff added really the pressing to it and and going forward with the whole team. And do you see that style of football that Cruyff? added to is that essentially the same style of football that the Barcelona team that he managed played um I I think the uh, Barcelona team was wasn't as as pressing forward as Ajax did I mean if you watch those matches from Ajax in the beginning of the 70s and the Dutch team in the, in those years in the 17 it was really the whole team going forward but in Spain it was always difficult to get the whole team as as brave you know because it's very scary to go forward with the whole team and you have all this space the empty empty space uh, in your back mm -hmm. um so it and and they wouldn't change places as much as as I did so it uh it it had some it had some elements of uh total football you know with, with I, I mean I, I remember full backs like for, Ferrer and stuff that 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 would uh, go up front a lot, but it's not the, it's not the uh, seemingly chaos at the pitch which made uh, Dutch football so uh, fascinating. And Elke, Cruyff managed Ajax for three years, eighty five to eighty eight, and then Barcelona for eight years, and he stopped in nineteen ninety six. We all know he had uh, roles, I suppose, in administration or in the hierarchies of clubs thereafter, but. Why did he walk away from coaching so early in his life? Well, in uh, general, in general, you must uh, see Cruyff not only as, as a very strong mythical person, but also as a person with some weaker spots. And uh, uh, in contrary to his attitude of the pitch, which was most of the time very relaxed uh you know if you if you compare him to to uh, to our coach uh, louis louis van gaal he was who is often loud etc craft is always soft uh, so, soft voice etc and friendly and open-minded etc but in fact the uh uh tensions for him were were very very big uh, you know he uh smoked a lot in in all his career also when he was a player also um and, and, and as a coach also. So uh, str strangely enough, um, 
he talked about quitting uh, professional football already after he was tw 22 because you know he was thin and not and not as big and not as strong and yet uh, migraine etc. So and 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 as a coach also it was really heavy for him to have these expectations all the time. You know everybody wanted expected his team to be brilliant and winning all the time and. That, that that really uh, costs a lot for him. Uh, so he was happy, as strange as, as it might seem to hear this, but he was happy to quit after uh, Barcelona sacked him in uh, 96. Mm. And so the last 20 years of his life uh, being liberated from all these pressures were the most happy uh, years in his life when he could do uh, things with his uh, foundation and, and sort of. So he could be more relaxed mm. strange thing isn't it yeah, for someone so involved at the top level for all of his life to walk away like that i always thought it was strange and especially yeah. because he would write his f column famously for the telegraph and he would still uh, appear routinely i think in television studios on dutch television talking about the game so when you think of the love and the interest he still had in the game and the options he would have had to go back and coach in countries like England or back to Spain or uh, coach the Netherlands, you know, all these wonderful options he must have had. Uh, it is extraordinary that he stayed away from the game. Yeah, it is. And one of the maybe the question that I get the most uh, at, at my lectures, it is why didn't Johan go to the World Championships in 78? You know, he was 31 years old. Yeah, a fit. He could do it. You know, why didn't why didn't he go? And it's always been kind of misty as many things in Cruyff's life because on the, the one day he would say this and the other day he would say that. Why didn't he go? He could have made a champion, uh, which he failed to do in uh, 74 uh, and etc. So that's, um, but thing, things were, weren't that easy for him. Uh, you see, thanks to my wife, Danny, he would say, I have not be, become someone like uh, George, George Best. So I, 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 need, I need his wife that is always, you know, telling to me to shut up, shut up when I uh, talk mm -hmm. too much, et cetera, et cetera. And, and many people think it was his wife, Danny, who forbid him to go to Argentina in uh, 78. Well, the two, the two uh, well, I'll, I'll call them rumors for the time being, and you can give us uh, your version. The two rumors, which are most predominant, one is that his wife, Danny, said, you promised me you wouldn't be away for weeks on end anymore, therefore you can't go. And the second yeah. one, of course, is to do with the threat of kidnap. Yeah, but that was, uh, uh, the the threat of kidnap was there, but that was also there in uh, 74. He had a special age also because, you know, as the World Championship in uh, West Germany in those days was only two years after the Olympic Games of uh, 72, who ended very, bloodly as you know um so those stats were always there and also in the franco spain where, where he played etc um so i I'm, I'm sure that he only brought that that up to uh, put his wife a little bit in the shadow of opinions and the press you know because pe people were always blaming her and so he ended up with this uh, threat which, which was real but that was not a reason for him not to go uh, to Argentina. It was really a, a mixture of things. He already said during the to tournament in 74 that it would be his last uh, big tournament and that it was not not human, unhuman to do these things. It's, 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 it costs me too much, he, 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 he said, etc. Et and, 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 and after that, he has re re repeated that man many times I won't go. I'll help Holland to uh, qualify for the tournament this year, but I, I won't go to Argentina because I want to stop at uh, at thir thirty one. And but but of course, you know, in seventy four we have had this um, uh, unglorious swimming pool incident in Germany where uh, Cruyff had had swum with naked German girls, and it was a big story in Bild Zeitung in uh, Germany. I uh, wrote a book also about, about this uh, tournament. This whole story about a nightly swimming pool thing was really true. Uh, no no uh, sex involved, 
in, involved, but the incident was there. And of course, Danny heard that in uh, Barcelona with, with their three little kids. And Danny was her, her ambition, her attitude was always like, I don't want to be the, the uh, uh, typical f footballer's wife. You know, yeah. I'm I'm blunt, but for the rest, I'm not a typical footballer's wife. And so he 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 uh, shouldn't fool me, and I won't accept strange things. Mm -hmm. And Cruyff knew that, and Cruyff was really a family man, or we were really hanging on uh, uh, Danny. So during that tournament already, he he was he was afraid that Danny might. Uh, leave him so i'm i'm not sure if he had to promise it donny with explicitly in in the in those words but i'm sure that this were really a big factor not to make her her angry again okay did he ever express serious regret about missing out in 78 regret um that's not like uh Cruyff is because Cruyff is always right so uh, he he would bend things uh People say to me, well, he lied every now and then, you know, because now he's talking this and then he's talking that. I say, no, he's not lying. He's playing with the truth. Okay. The truth, the reality for Kruf, Kruf is like a ball. I mean, you play with it and that's that's always the same. So he he bended it like this, that he, he would say, you know, okay, we uh, lost the final and, and uh, sadly enough, we, we didn't play as good as in the... Uh, matches be, before, but uh, but on the other hand, people are still talking about our play, and nobody and nobody ever talks about the German play, while the Germans won. So, in fact, we we won mm. morally. Uh, you know what I mean? I that's do. that's Cruyff. He would always yeah. he 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 could make a loss into a, into a defeat into a victory. Okay, you met Cruyff several times. There's a really interesting entertaining anecdote in the book about when he was in his early 50s and he was doing Champions League coverage in a television studio and you were there to I suppose uh, survey as he watched seven different matches on seven different screens and seemed to yeah. absorb everything that was going on yeah yeah I I heard those uh, stories about Cruyff doing that and of course me you know a uh, journalist always uh, skeptical so I said no nobody can be that bionic so I had a, I had arranged that I could that I could be there at a certain hour, evening at the television studio, studios where where Cruyff was a pundit, and I was only one or two meters behind him, and I must admit uh, it was all true. <laughs> so uh, the, 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 this part of his myth was uh, true. He would see all those matches. And he would not only uh, see what was happening on these screens, but he would also tell everybody what should have happened on all those screens. And that the, this full back is, should, should be a, a little bit more to the right, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, that's really bionic. And it's almost not uh, human to uh, do all this stuff. And, 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 and of course, when you, uh, match, when you watch some uh, football games with, with a lot of people, you, there's, there's a, everybody puts some money in it, you know, to, to predict the, the uh, outcome of the games. And I don't have to tell you who, who won all the money. So uh, he, when, when Cruyff, after the games, he put all his money in his, uh, in his uh, pocket, all these, all these guilders, it was still in the guilder uh, area. And, and he would look at this, paper with with all with all the names you know all the uh, all the only the first uh, letters of, of the names in the in the museum say who is a a k who's that and i would go uh, it's me he doesn't understand a thing of it i i i, I had i had all the results wrong but mm. after that only a few minutes after that i was Stand, standing there watching a screen with some some high highlights of one of the games and he would come and stand next to me and he say, look at this, look at this striker. He's going to the goalkeeper and he's going to the left. Many strikers do that when they're alone and they go to the goal, they go to the left or the right, maybe to their favorite foot. But he said, then he makes the goal smaller, optical smaller. So that's, and I was, and he was talking like me, he was taking me very uh, seriously. And I was thinking, hey bro, do you know who I am? Yeah. I'm I'm a I'm a nobody. 
yes. but that's for Cruyff, and that's one of his really his most wonderful things as a person. For him, it 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 wouldn't matter whether I was a, a prime minister or a, or a baker or somebody working at the street or some or the postman to give me a letter. He would talk to anybody about football. He he said one of the nicest things he he said he was I don't look up to anybody and I don't look down at anybody in the world. Mm. And that's and that's really a nice feature. So I presume then he was an utterly sensational, compelling, must not be missed pundit. He was, but it wasn't always easy to understand him uh, because he had his own way of putting things. As and and but but somehow he would dominate his uh, conversation with the commentator, o- always like that. Also in the pitch, you know, the center word of Cruyff is dominating he always wanted to dominate where he was as a footballer but also outside so never an interviewer at at the television would say hey Johan what did you say there I, I didn't understand nobody would do that so so they would they would just nod and and etc and smile at him and Cruyff would talk and talk and he had his own way of saying of uh talking speaking dutch and when he was in spain he uh, he uh, did the same he would mix up words etc and then he said oh uh, but but that also had to do with his brain it was uh, he, he said well when when he was older he said yeah people are asking me sometimes you know i i don't seem to put things right but that must be because the the things in my head go so fast that it's already out of my head when I still had to put it in words. Mm. So things were going like like his brain was was not um, was not a system of uh, pictures but of movies. Things were always moving in his head, and it was not easy for him to uh, to really uh, tell people what he what he wanted or what he meant. A question, I suppose, which is about you and about Croy. So I was reading. You, as a journalist, uh, owe your readers the truth. And ultimately, that is your your starting point when you're asking them to hand over their money for a piece of work like this. And so, for instance, you uh, detail uh, Cruyff's infidelity. And I presume this prompted a mixed reception given his status in the Netherlands, that maybe this was a betrayal of his privacy. So for you, that's... a difficult scenario to make a decision on do i include this or do i not include this and, and you did yeah. include it uh, give us your thinking on that and, and how was the reaction to something uh, so so private about someone so beloved being published yeah because um people were uh, talking these saying these things to me uh and and i'm i'm not a, a sensational uh, journalist or whatever um, and, I, and I should say, it's not a sensational book. It's not that kind of book. No, it's not. But when people were talking, then I was thinking, yeah, um, maybe I sh- I should write this uh, and not make it make it bi- bigger than it is. But I have to do it because in his myth, uh, and because m- m- many uh, Cruyff, uh, books about Cruyff were ri- written by his friends in the press, he, he, he always had uh, important football uh, journalist uh, friends with also in Spain who would who would act like uh, like his his uh, guards you know uh, etc so, and and he was always put down as someone who was not always easy to cope with but in fact were a really um, decent father at home and uh, like all, all, all the other all, all the other players they do wild wild things when in the when in the city, of Amsterdam, etc. But Johan is always very nice and always a family man. So I, had, I somehow I think I, I, I said to myself I have to correct this a little bit. And I mean it's only a page or something. And and it's true some um, some of his uh, f- followers um, don't 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 like it very very much that I that I wrote this down. Uh, but in general, you know, when when uh, when uh, people buy a biography, they they know it's it's not it's not only about about his uh, holiness. That is, it really um, they want to know how he really was, and that's what I want to do. And therefore, I had to add this 
chapter also, but it's only one one page or something. And uh, yeah. but it, I, I'm not proud of it. But I, I just it was just something I thought I had to do. Yes, yes, and it's a big book, so one page is not a huge amount. <laughs> <laughs> and and I mean uh, nobody's holy. I mean famous famous men in this world they are, are hardly always holy. Yeah. So and Cruyff, uh sadly enough, sadly enough, is not an exception to this. No. But but there are, I, I know several players from Ajax also from the time who went far far much much further than than he 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 wasn't known for that but he also he had his moments. Yes, well, I guess everybody's human and uh, that's you know uh, to be expected in many respects. So, what else would you tell us about Cruyff the person? Uh, you mentioned the the the, the myth and, and so you've touched on maybe one aspect of his behaviour there and you said he always was always right. Yeah, Cruyff was never wrong. Uh, yeah. What else would you say about Cruyff? Did he have a temper? Did he, um, was he gregarious? You said, you know, you mentioned he wouldn't look up to anyone or down on anyone. Give us a sense of the man. Well, um, what struck me was that he, um, uh, first of all, he had to be, he had, he, had, he had to invent his own game. As I, as I told you, he was, as a youth player, he was too small and too thin. He had, he had, he had a strange foot. He had, the, uh, a specialist had to come to Amsterdam to make a special football shoe for, for, for him, etc. And he was nervous and tensed and not disciplined enough, etc. I mean, if you keep, compare him to, to Ruud uh, Gullet, you know, he, he was big and smiling all the time and, and feeling easy and strong, etc. That's about the opposite of how Cruyff was. So Cruyff had to, had to overcome his, his incapacity almost to, to uh, conquer. He first had to conquer himself before he could conquer the opponents. And that's, and that's really what struck me because this is uh, uh, his weaker points made him or forced him to be genius. You know, he, he, he would jump around uh, uh, defenders, et cetera. He had some kind of extra sense where, where, whether the danger would uh, come from, like, like, a, like a deer in the woods. He would jump around, he would like a, like a scary deer, mm. and, and et cetera. And, he, and this development also about, you know, using all the, all the parts of his feet and, 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 his, and his thinking that was to, and, and it all came down from, in fact, not se seem, seemingly not being shaped for pro sports. Uh, and, and, and out of that grew one of the most important sports ever. And that's really what uh, fascinates me. And that, but that also influenced his whole, his whole thinking about the game. As once against the BBC, he said, football is a game you play with your mind. Mm. Uh, you know, for Cruyff, there's always mind, mind of a body, mind of a matter. And that's, uh, and that's, he, uh, that's what he, how, how he looked at younger players. Does he see it? Yes. And his whole thinking about his whole, but he also his own, character you know is the subtitle is always on the attack and that that's what he was if 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 i don't beat him now he'll beat me you know like a street fighter on the pitch so i i i have to be quicker i have to, i have to be i have to surprise him etc and then i can beat him and that was always as 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 as, as he was as himself the way he think thought about football the way he talked about football it was it was hardly he hardly ever talked about we have to play more passionate or or passionate or we, or, or we have to run harder or something. Yeah. It was always we have to be smarter. Yeah. The solution is having is being smarter. If you stand here, you know, like he made uh, a Pep Guardiola, a central uh, defense player. He, he he wasn't tall. He wasn't quick. He 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 wasn't tough. But he said, yeah, but Pep is seeing it. And if I if I make defense big, Pep is the weakest defender in the world. But if we organize the defense and midfields so that the, the spaces are small, he's the best defender in the world. And in the 1992 Champions League final, he played with Ronald Koeman and Guardiola in the center of the defense. And none of them both were a, a decent defender. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's because yeah, but, but they are seeing it, and that's yes. and that's where it all it all comes down to. 
Pep is still seeing it. I think it's fair to say. He does. Did <laughs> Cruyff have interests outside of football? Did he like politics? Was he interested in the world? Was he interested in the arts? Or was it a, a one-dimensional Well, well he was, yes. He, he, as a person, he was very curious. You know, when, 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 he was, when he would enter a plane, he would go up to the cockpit and talk to a pilot. Uh, how do you do this? And where are all these nuts, etc. But after a uh, few minutes of course he would tell the pilot how to how to fly an airplane mm -hmm. or in the bus when he was somewhere in the united states for the first time whatever somewhere in chicago or whatever he, he would go to the bus driver who was driving there for ages no no you could better take that no that's that, that's what's okay. quicker that's because he he was always right um but having said that he's all uh, thinking about uh, society or, or to run a football club or whatever, it, it all it, it 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 all originated from his philosophy on football. Football has made his brain as it was. He he was uh, hardly educated, and so he transposed the things he knew from the pitch outside of the of the of the of the football. Also, he he wasn't really a philosopher. Some some of his followers think that that he was wise also in other in other spheres of society. I I doubt that to be frankly. We can overestimate that. Yes, we can. When, uh, if you allow me to indulge in a stereotype for a moment, when we think of uh, Dutch football at its most entertaining, you do enjoy fighting with each other. Uh, seems to be. Uh, Yes, <laughs> an aspect of Dutch teams. So one of the Sorry great beefs. We well, no, listen. Keep doing it. It's it's terribly entertaining. <laughs> one of the great beefs, of course, maybe one of the more famous beefs in world football is Cruyff versus Van Gaal. What is the truth of that relationship? Well, as as all the conflicts that Cruyff has had in his life, that's that's also a bit misty. Uh, you know, I uh, live in Amsterdam, and 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 a, a walk from uh, Cruyff's. Um, the home where he grew up and Van Gaal's home where he grew up was about a walk uh, for 20 minutes and, and they both were raised by Ajax, etc. And their philosophies, football, aren't that different, uh, if I may say so. And, but then again, uh, you know, Van, Van, Van Gaal told, told me when I talked to him about uh, for my uh, biography of Cruyff, he said, be, before I went to uh, Barcelona, I had a dinner with uh, Rinus Michels, who had also been the coach, both at Amsterdam and at Barcelona. And Michels told uh, Van Gaal, Louis, know what you are doing, but because now you are entering the Cruyff area. And so uh, Cruyff was really a f fluent, elegant artist on the one hand, but a real machismo on the other hand he, mm. he, he could be very hard and uh, to to other people very very harsh and so it was it was um really brave from Louis van Gaal or maybe na naive to uh, do the same thing as Cruyff had done that is to say going from Amsterdam to uh, Barcelona so Cruyff really really didn't he was really very very com competitive in that and um it was uh, Cruyff of Van Van Gaal also for a short time was a kind of intern at uh, Barcelona when when he, when he ended up his uh, his uh, sports college in Ho in Holland, and then there was some vague incident because as the Cruyffs are were Danny and Johan come Louis come and uh, stay with us in Barcelona etc really really friendly hostly people, but then so suddenly uh, Van Gaal heard that his uh, sister had died in Holland, so of course he packed his things and, and took the first plane to Holland. And somehow there was a there was misunderstanding of Louis having, having not said sorry, but I have to go or not having been grateful enough, really a small, unnecessary thing. But somehow after that, uh, Cruyff would only uh, write very uh, negative in his uh, columns in uh, Spain about Van Gaal. And after that, he had never sen said one positive word about Van Gaal as a coach, you know, when Van Gaal beat, beat the whole world with, with Ajax in the mid 90s, with really uh, attacking nice, wonderful football, uh, etc. He, he had never said 
anything nice about uh, about Van Gaal. And of course, that hurt Van Gaal because Van Gaal was the second striker at Ajax at the beginning of, beginning of the 70s. The one who, who had a wonderful eye for the game, really great technique, but far too slow for the uh, for the pro sport. So he, he was the second man. And so Cruyff and Van Gaal is always very uh, complex, but I think Cruyff hasn't always been too, too fair about Van Gaal because Van, Van Gaal really is a strange person. I must admit that, but he, he, he's done some great things as a coach also. And Van Gaal would ask me, which, which was not after a question of mine, but he said, Auke, listen, of course, as a coach, I'm much, much better than Cruyff has ever been. <laughs> Put that in your book, Auke. I will in the in the next edition. <laughs> well, listen, we have uh, barely in our conversation here scratched the surface of this uh, very big big book. Uh, it's full of great detail, and it's been translated into English uh, this year. Originally published in twenty nineteen, so it's called "Always on the Attack," and it's the biography of Johan Cruyff. Auka Koch, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's very much appreciated. It was my uh, pleasure. Th- Thank you very, very much for for your attention and everything. And uh, buy my book, I would say.